Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will show you how you can migrate your existing Android app to use the new predictive back gestures that we have on Android. So previously, back navigation worked like this. We have an app, we have a screen A, where we can go to a screen B, for example, and when we then attempt to navigate back with our gesture, then, oh, we can just do this. If we do this again, then we just get to our home screen. But then Android introduced a new feature, which is called predictive back gestures. And this feature kind of already tells the user during the back navigation where this will lead them. So the way this will work is, let's go back to um, screen B again. If we now swipe back, then you will see that we can already see the transition to screen A during the back navigation. So we don't even need to leave the touch here. And we can already see, okay, this leads me to screen A. Oh no, I actually don't want to go there uh, so I can stop the uh, gesture. And if we do this and completely swipe back, well, then we obviously get back to screen A. And the same happens when we now uh, leave screen A and want to go back to our home screen. If we now have the gesture, you can see this also shows us, oh, okay, navigating back here will actually close the app and navigate us back to our uh, home screen. Let's do that. Okay, um, that was expected. So that's the whole idea of these predictive back gestures that we just tell the user doing the back gesture where this will lead them to. And for these typical back navigations, like going back from one screen to another or just closing wrap, this works pretty much out of the box with a few minor tweaks. But there are scenarios where you have to migrate your app to this new predictive back gestures. Because what actually happens if your app has some kind of custom back handling behavior? Let's say on some kind of screen you show a dialog and when the user hits back or navigates back, the dialog is closed instead of you navigating to the previous screen. Now what happens if you have a bottom sheet and you can close this with navigating back with a back gesture? Or what happens if you just have some kind of expanded text, for example, which would actually get collapsed again when the user navigates back. Well then by default, Android now of course can know what it should show to the user to highlight what happens when they navigate back. And this is exactly what I will show you here in this video. Specifically, I will show you on the one hand that if you have a bottom sheet like here and you navigate back that you can see that we also use predictive back gestures with the sheet that in this case, the, the gesture would instead close the sheet rather than navigating back. If we then attempt to navigate back, well, we get back to screen A. And the other thing that I will show you is if you really need these custom animations to show what happens when the user attempts to navigate back. So here we have this text that I talked about that is currently collapsed. And if we expand it, and let's say we now have a custom behavior that when we navigate back, this text is actually closed, first of all, before uh, we navigate back to the previous screen. And what I will show you is how you can really achieve this with predictive back gestures as well. So if we navigate back, oops, um, then you can see we also tell the user, oh, when you navigate back, this text actually gets collapsed. And by the way, if you're actually curious how I managed to really make all these coding concepts stick in my brain, especially these internals about things, then I'm going to reveal my top five learning methods that really help me to learn in two weeks what many other people need 10 for. I will reveal these in a free live online workshop on November 2nd at 3 p.m. UTC time. You can register below for free. It's really only live, will be completely interactive and therefore also not be recorded. All right, so where do we start? The first thing you need to do if you want to follow along with this video actually is to clone the initial code that I already included in the GitHub repository down below. So this just includes this very basic two screen setup with this expanded text, but without the uh, custom back handling behavior. Also, if you are actually working on a device on API level 33 or 34, then you can make predictive back gestures work. So these are technically available on these API levels, but you explicitly have to opt into these in your developer settings. So you first of all have to go to your developer settings or settings here, and then simply search for, you can see it already, predictive back animations here under developer options, select that, and then you need to turn this on and then it will also work on um, these API levels. So 33, 34, and everything from 35 onwards, um, these will be uh, enabled by default. So first of all, once you clone the initial branch, this is what you will find. You will already find this um, collapsible and expandable text, but when we then navigate back, you can see there is no prediction about where this leads us at all. And if we navigate back, well, it immediately gets collapsed. But we didn't really tell the user that this will happen with a back gesture. And that is what we will implement. Furthermore, you will also find this bottom sheet screen, which is really just um, a screen that shows a modal bottom sheet with a sheet state as a state whether the sheet is open or not. And when we then click our button here, we simply toggle the state to true. So we show the sheet. And if it's open, we show this modal bottom sheet. And if you run this code just like this here in this branch and go to screen B, where we can open the sheet, navigate back, 
you can see this doesn't really come with predictive back gestures. If we never get back, well, the sheet is closed, but it is not really shrinking um, based on the way that I showed you before. But I can already tell you that this is the easiest thing that we can do here in this video because the uh, Material 3 bottom sheet already supports this by default, that we can use it together with these um, back gestures. The only thing we need to do to uh, even make our app opt in to use these uh, predictive back gestures and support that is just adding one line in our manifest. So let's open the manifest and here in our application tag, we can enable on back invoked callback which simply set this to true. You can see we also get a warning that this is only relevant from API level 33 and up, but that is completely fine here. And just having this minor tweak lets us relaunch the app, go back to our bottom sheet screen, and if we now open this and attempt to navigate back, you can see we already natively supported that back gesture um, just by making sure that we have this line in our manifest. You also do have to make sure that you're using the latest Material 3 version. So um, in my project, I'm just using the most up-to-date um, bill of materials here. So this version definitely includes the uh, bottom sheet with this behavior. Also, by opting into this in the manifest, you can also see that now the other back gestures are actually supported out of the box, just not for our text, because this really involves some kind of custom animation. And there is nothing in our app that tells the, the back press framework um, that we actually want to collapse this text before navigating back. So what I already did is I, I added this custom back handler that just collapses the text when it is expanded, uh, which you can see here. So if we navigate back well and it just gets uh, collapsed immediately but we also want to show that with this little animation depending on how far we swiped here and this is actually not so difficult to do because all we need to do for that is we need to define a callback so a custom back press callback which we can create here in our text screen composable with uh, let's call it on back callback or so we want to create this in remember block so we cache this ac across recompositions and this is nothing else than an anonymous class of type on back pressed callback. Here we can then pass in whether we want to um, enable or disable this callback. So if this is only enabled based on some kind of state, you can put this here. In our case, let's just keep this enabled. And in here we can then hit command I to override this handle on back pressed function, which is simply invoked when we navigate back. That itself at this point is nothing else than um, using such a back handler like here, uh, which is this uh, actually like here, this one, uh, using such a back handler, which is always invoked when we hit back on this screen. And this is just more the, the, the compose friendly way of this callback. But the thing is, we not only care about when back was invoked, but also about the handle on back progressed. So here we get the uh, the specific progress of our um, swiping backs so of this uh, swipe gesture. And we might also want to override when the back gesture was canceled. We can remove these super calls because we are going to implement these on our own. And the most interesting part about this um, custom animation is now this back event. So whenever we actually swipe with just a tiny bit, this function will now be invoked with a new back event, and this back event contains the current progress. So something between zero and one F, depending on how far we swiped. And this is something we of course need to keep track of in a state. So we can then use this value later on for our animation. So we want to have our back progress by remember that is a mutable float state of, let's actually make this a nullable state. So initially when we did not even start navigating back, we keep this null, make this null. And I think we need to use mutable state of if we're using nullable primitives, yes. So we have our back progress, uh, which is a float value between zero and one can be null. And here in our handle on back pressed, we simply say back, uh, back pressed, back, uh, back progress is equal to the back event on progress. Furthermore, when we actually trigger the back event. So when we leave the touch and we also swiped far enough to, to really navigate back, well, then instead of navigating to the previous screen in this case, we simply want to collapse our text. So we say text, um, is text expanded? Whoops. Is text expanded is false in that case. And we also want to set our back progress to null again in this case. The same we want to do here when we actually canceled the um, gesture. So back progress is null. Then instead of defining this back handler composable, we now need to add this callback uh, manually, which you can do with the val back pressed dispatcher, which we can get with local on back pressed dispatcher owner, a very long word, that current dot on back pressed dispatcher. We need to make sure this is not null. And then we can have a disposable effect where we pass in both our back press dispatcher as well as our is text expanded. So when either of these properties changed, 
uh, this block here will be recalled because in this block of code, we now want to add this callback that we've created up here to the actual backpress dispatcher that will then execute this callback when we attempt to navigate back. So if the text is now expanded, only then we want to add this callback, then we say backpressed dispatcher add callback and we add our back on back callback it's called. And then in on this pose, so when this composable leaves the composition, we want to make sure that we remove the callback again, which you can do with on back callback that remove. Okay, so what we are now able to do is we do have this callback, which we also added to our back press dispatcher. So this callback will be really invoked. We do keep track of the uh, current back progress, which will start at zero F. And when we then navigate back, um, depending on how far we swipe, this will animate or this will change towards one F at the very um, right edge of our screen. We now have to take this progress and use that to, to kind of derive an animation off of this progress for our text. So we need to scroll down to where we defined this text here, which you can see whether it's um, expanded, then it's a long text, otherwise a short text. When we click it, we simply toggle the state. And we also already added the animate content size modifier so that when the size of this content changed, we will um, animate that instead. And in order to now really add this animation, we on the one hand also need to keep track of um, the height of our text when it's collapsed and the height of our text when it's expanded. So we want to scroll up to our states, var text height expanded by remember, which is a mutable state of initially zero dp. Same thing we can define for the uh, collapsed height, text height collapsed, also zero dp initially because we will now assign these values here for our text in this modifier by saying on globally positioned, so uh, when when Compose knows where to position this uh, specific text composable, when it knows the dimensions of it, uh, then this lambda will be invoked. Here we can then check when our text is expanded and our back progress is um, null. So the text is currently in the expanded state and we did not yet start our back swipe gesture. In that case, we know that the current height of the text is equal to our expanded height. So our text height expanded is equal to our it, so the layout coordinates we get from this unglobally positioned lambda, dot size, dot height. This returns the height in pixels, however, we want to have that as dp values. To convert pixels to dp, we can make use of the density, which we get from local density dot current. And then we simply take this and wrap it inside of a width density block. Put this in here, and then we can convert this 2dp with a 2dp function. Same thing we want to do for the for the other way. So when our when our text is not expanded, then we want to pretty much do the same, just that we don't assign this to our text height expanded, but text height collapsed. And then after this, uh, on globally positioned modifier, we want to have a then modifier which simply applies another modifier. But since we, we just want to conditionally apply another modifier here, so we want to conditionally assign a, a fixed height here only during the back gesture. Otherwise, we just want to assign the height that the uh, text needs. But to conditionally apply a modifier, we can then check this in here. So if our back progress is not null, so if we are currently actively swiping back, then we want to um, assign this specific uh, height to our um, to our text that is now dependent on the animation and otherwise we just assign a blank modifier. So in here we want to have a modifier where we say height in, where we say the minimum height should always be our text height collapsed. So the text should never be smaller than the uh, collapsed text height. And then the actual height that we now assign here will be our expanded text height multiplied, let's actually move this into a new line, multiplied with opening parentheses 1f minus another opening parentheses, our back progress, and if that doesn't exist, we use 0f. So our text height expanded is the whole height that our text currently spans. And if we multiply this with 1f minus our back progress, so let's say the back progress is uh, 10%, so uh, 0.1, then we will multiply this text height expanded with 90%. So for 10% of our swipe progress, we will then also shrink this expanded text height by 10%. If we completely swipe to the right edge of our screen, well, then this back progress will be 1f, and we have um, text height expanded multiplied with 1f minus 1f, so this will, this will uh, result in a height of zero, which will then be um, set to the minimum height of the collapsed text height. So I think this makes sense, and I think we're already done with this. Uh, we can run this and then hopefully see a working result where we have an animation based on our back gesture. So there we go. 
If we now swipe back without expanding the text, you can see we would get to the previous app. And if we expand our text and now swipe back, well, then we have the exact result as I showed you before in the preview that we can collapse this text and we perfectly tell the user what happens when we navigate back here. And of course, it's completely dependent on your specific use case or what you need to do in your code. But the relevant part that you have to remember is really this specific callback where, we, where you keep track of the back progress. How difficult. Because with this back progress, you can animate pretty much anything. So it doesn't need to be the text height, of course. Um, if you would have a dialog, then you could use this back uh, progress here to just shrink it by assigning it to the current scale of the dialog or whatever kind of use case you have for a custom back press callback. So I hope you enjoyed this. As I said, join the workshop down below. It's completely free, won't be recorded, won't be repeated. It's just a one-time workshop where I reveal my top five running methods, how I really manage to remember things that I learned. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing rest of your week. See you back in the next video. Bye-bye.